Welcome back, I am John P. Today, we are going to be talking about the best ways to sell your watch in the year 2022 to maximize your gain. The ways that you can sell your watch if you're looking to do so, as well as the pros and cons. Today, there are so many ways that you can sell your watch. There's marketplaces, private party, and so many different things that have popped up for watch collectors to take advantage of that allow you to turn your watch into either other watches or cash. And as a watch dealer through DelrayWatch.com, of course, I do have some bit of bias, but the reality is I also have been watch collecting for over a decade, you know, quite longer than that. And before I had Delray Watch, I also used all the different methods to kind of trade watches casually. So I'm gonna go ahead and interject my experience uh, as a watch dealer and collector together and give you the best ways or really all the ways to sell your watches in 2022 as well as the pros and cons. Before I do that, on the wrist today, I have my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra 38.5 um, in titanium, good planet. I really love this watch. You can see more about this as well as my personal watches on my Instagram, The Real John P. So without further ado, the first place that you can sell your watch is going to be the best place, which is a friend. If you have friends that are watch collectors, I always recommend to ask them first. Surprisingly, I see a lot of watch collectors that will sell maybe a watch that's unique or a watch that is of some sentimental value and either someone in their family wanted it or one of their friends wanted it and maybe they just never brought it to their attention. And then sometimes, uh, you know, there'll be a bit of a hunting process to try to find that watch because it meant something to that person. You see it all the times with watches that are inherited or it's in the family or maybe it was an uncle's and it was passed on to the different person. So always check with your friends and family if you think that is the case. And you know, if you do sell the watch to a friend, you'll probably get uh, the best deal or at least a deal that will make you feel the most comfortable. But rolling on to places that are probably more likely for you to take advantage of, uh, first is going to be marketplaces. Now, I'm not affiliated with any marketplaces more than I've sold on them and I've bought on them, including through Delray Watch on these platforms. So I'm in no way affiliated with them. So anything I say is really just my personal opinion, but you do have eBay, Chrono24, and The Real Real. Now, these platforms are kind of ever-changing in a sense that the way that they behave and the different offerings they have, as well as some of their authenticity guarantees, all of the different things are changing kind of with the times and marketplaces have become more popular. They've given you a lot more fail safes, but they have become convoluted in a sense. So when you sell on these marketplaces, there are some positives, but there are some negatives, which might not apply to you in either instance, or you might not care. So it's really for you to decide. But when you sell on a marketplace like this, there is going to be a really big commission fee. Now, it might not be big depending on the, the, the price of the watch that you're selling. There's different ranges, but you do have to take into consideration that when you sell a watch on one of these platforms, there is a commission fee. Now it can range anywhere from a, a couple of percent if it's a very expensive watch to you know upwards of 15%, just depending on the conditions, the promotion. So you do have to look into it. But nonetheless, there is a fee. Now the plus side of these platforms is going to be they bring so many eyes to your watch, right? If you're looking to sell your watch and you know, maybe you don't need to or you don't want to sell it that quickly, you'll put it out there. It's an interesting watch, a special watch. Put it out there, sit on it, see what happens. The reality is these platforms and other marketplaces just bring so many eyes to the watch. And so that's a really good thing, right? If you just wanna maybe get some feelers, you're not sure if you're gonna sell it, place it high out there in terms of pricing and see what happens, that's a great way to take that into consideration. People do this all the time and it, sometimes it does work out for them. It's a great place to go if you're not sure that you wanna sell the watch and you just wanna feel out the market but also it's a great place to see pricing for the watch. If you have a similar watch, you can look and see what others are listed at. Now the marketplaces in the past have had some issues with some, uh, some bad buyers and things like that. In recent times, there has been a big effort and push to clean up a lot of this. And I think uh, for the most part, these three platforms have done a pretty great job, but take into consideration that there are still some people that unfortunately do make use of these third-party platforms to commit things like fraud and other things. So you still do have to be careful. There are some guarantees, but you do have to be careful 
in a sense, but overall, these platforms can work out you know, a good percentage of the time. Now, next we have watch forums. Now, if you're maybe not a hardcore watch collector or a watch enthusiast, maybe you might not know that there are these watch forums out there on the internet. There's a time zone, a watch you seek, the Rolex forums, a couple of others, and you can sell your watches on these platforms. Now, the good of this is you're selling to fellow watch collectors that are generally looking for the watch that you have, and there can be some reassurance on these forums for feedback, right? If you have a good deal, there's different places where feedback can be left, and that's really reassuring for a seller like yourself, or if you're thinking about it, to see the kind of feedback about that particular buyer. Maybe they were a seller, but you, you get some sense there, right? If you sell on a forum, generally you need to have a certain limit of posts, Maybe you need a certain track record of deals. So there are some things and considerations and some kind of social proof that's tied to this deal. Now that doesn't mean the deal is gonna go through smoothly, right? You're still working with a pretty anonymous person at the end of the day. You're not really, the, the forums don't really back the deal in any kind of a way. The forums are really just a, a placeholder, kind of like a classifieds ad in a newspaper. Uh, I don't know if those exist anymore, but you get the idea. It's really a classified, hey, this is available and the buyer and seller have to work out the details to themselves. There might be a little bit of help out of the, the good graces of the forum moderators, but generally it's kind of you're on your own. Now, I see forum deals work out really well for special or enthusiast watches, right? Imagine you have like a very rare kind of vintage watch uh, for, and you don't wanna send it to an auction house. It's like, yeah, you know, maybe it doesn't hit the threshold to where it's, it's interesting for the auction house to take it in. A forum might be a great place because they tend to have kind of uh, certain brands or niches that the collectors are drawn to, like an Omega forum. Like they're there for Omega watches, right? Or they're there for particularly a certain brand. So the forums can can really behave great, and they can act really. Um, they can really provide a lot of great value when you have that kind of like focus type of watch. Other than that, I do see a lot of mixed. Uh, I see a lot of mixed feedback and mixed experiences on the forums currently. Even with Delray Watch, I would say five years ago, we sold on the forums, you know, a little bit before that, when we were getting started, we would sell on the forums and it would be a great place for us to kind of meet new collectors and things like that. But the forums just tended to attract oftentimes problems. A lot of people maybe wanting to try on the watches, send them back. And there was there's not a lot of, you know, when you're private parties, there's not a lot of help from outside people, especially when you're dealing with wires or bank transfers on the forums with people that don't really have a lot of great feedback. So uh, the choice is yours, but I, I do see a lot of mixed reviews on the forums and it does take a, a lot of practice and experience, in my opinion, to really uh, get comfortable on the forums. Now, rolling on is selling to a dealer. Now, there's two different ways you can really sell a watch to a dealer. There's two different models, right? Even when thinking of the marketplaces, you have a direct sell where essentially the, the watch dealer is just going to pay you money or maybe a credit or a trade for the watch that you're selling. This is pretty simple me method and it does rely on the dealer needing to bake in a certain margin so they can sell it. Now they look at, dealers will look at what they sold previous uh, examples of that watch for. They'll look at the market, they'll see you know, uh, sold listings on places and kind of see what the fail safe is and, and factor in their overhead cost. But sometimes if a dealer maybe doesn't want to stock the watch, like for example, right now, some Rolex watches, uh, some dealers can be a little bit hesitant. We are even hesitant on some Rolex models now with the way that the market is kind of going for, for Rolex, unfortunately, to where, you know, we might turn down a, a Rolex deal if, you know, we're kind of unsure on that day. And a lot of uh, dealers are also kind of doing that as well. But there are some dealers, and, and we almost never do this at Delray Watch because it gets kind of tricky and it's a lot to keep track of. And it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a whole different type of model. But there's, aside from selling, there's a consignment model, right? And there's some dealers out there that will take the watch in on consignment and they will sell it on your behalf and they'll either mark it up or they'll take a percentage. And it works kind of like a, like a marketplace might except for the dealers actually, you know, marketing the watch, the dealers processing the watch and handling it like it's their own, though it's actually yours and they took it in and they're selling it on 
your behalf. And this sometimes is offered by dealers as a way to maybe not stock the watch if it's risky, or perhaps it gets the customer, really the watch seller yourself, a little bit more, right? If you don't have to buy the watch, you don't have to stock it, you can take, you can really bake in less of a markup and deliver the uh, that those funds to the customer. But the risk really is placed on uh, the customer at the end of the day. So it really just kind of depends what you're looking to do as well as what the watch is. Something to keep in mind is all of these places where you can sell a watch or methods are going to be different and act a little bit different depending on the brand you have as well as the watch, right? If you have a watch that's in super high demand, you can pretty much take it anywhere and it's gonna sell. But if you have a really specific type of watch, you might even focus on certain places where they do better, right? Maybe a more fashion style brand is gonna do better on a real, real platform. Or, you know, maybe a, uh, you know, a vintage watch is gonna get a higher, uh, sell price to a vintage watch dealer as opposed to more of a big box watch dealer that's just going to treat it like a, an ordinary or a normal kind of uh, watch that they would sell in any other regard. So that's something to keep in mind is, you know, really find out when it comes to the, the dealers, find out, you know, which dealers really specialize in those brands. I can say, you know, uh, shamelessly with Delray Watch, you know, we do uh, focus on some of these brands that were lesser known. They've become more known, but you know, think of the Gerard Perigos, think of the H Mosers. Historically, we've always, you know, pretty much offered the best or worked out the best deal on brands like that because you know we also have the collectors that come to us for those things. Now, if you took, uh, if you had a Gerard Perigo, for example, and you took that to a vintage watch dealer, they might not really give you a great number on that because it's just, you know, they don't have the customers for it. So why would they? It's more of a risk to them and. It's not really in uh, you know their wheelhouse for what they do. So that's something to keep in mind as well is you know when you're selling your watch, find out who actually deals in these watches because not all offers are going to be the same if it doesn't make sense really for that that dealer or that buyer to really uh, to work with that watch if they can't sell it. Now, uh, I will say that after you've kind of figured out where or maybe you've you've kind of dabbled or you've experimented where you want to sell your watch, there are some things you can do to actually, uh, you know, almost guarantee that you're going to get the best price possible should you have done everything else in the past. What I mean by this is if you follow these next tips, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, and also get you the best price from really any of the parties, the marketplaces, the dealers, the private parties, the friends. If you do these next couple of things, it's really going to help you a whole lot. And the first thing is going to be take clear photos. Now, every day today, I think a lot of people really do have a, you know, a camera phone or you know, a high resolution camera on their phone. Maybe not everyone, but it's very common. I look at the stats at Delray Watch, it kind of tells you what, what devices people are browsing on. It seems like overwhelmingly people have camera phones. So take some clear pictures, make sure it's light, go outside if you need to, but the clearer the pictures, the better the pictures, the more angles, the more that the buying party can make their decision of, you know, where they're comfortable paying for it. Doesn't matter where it is or who it is, the pictures are going to go a long way. And if it's dark or grainy, there can sometimes be some confusion and you wanna make sure to clear up any confusion beforehand because if it's dark and unclear, you send the watch to, uh, let's say, a private party. They look at the watch. They're like, hey, this, you know, this gouge wasn't in the picture and maybe there was a shadow there. That's going to be a big deal breaker. It's going to be a headache. It might kill the deal or you might get a lot less. So pictures really do tell a thousand words with these watches. Now, next, I unfortunately see this and I don't know if this is an artifact of, you know, maybe how cars used to be at a certain point, something like that. I kind of get the feeling that uh, that's how pre-owned cars maybe uh, that industry was once upon a time, but mint condition, there's this term thrown around out there of mint condition, and I think mint means something different to so many people. So conditions, you know, explaining a condition as mint, I think does open the floor oftentimes for some issues. So I would avoid that. I would really avoid that because it's not really clearly defined and also new. The saying something is new can sometimes be thrown out there, right? Like, oh, it's new, it's brand new. But like, what is that, right? And that means, once again, different things to different people. So if someone says, oh, this Rolex watch is new, but then you get the watch and it's like, well, the dealer sized it. And at that point, I'm sure you put it on your wrist. And so is it really new? Like the card can be dated a couple of days ago, but 
tell me you didn't put it on your wrist? Are the stickers on it? And you get into this kind of scenario where it's like, it's new, it's not new. And unfortunately, when it comes to, you know, like these Rolex watches, new can really command such a premium. So I recommend staying away from that unless truly it hasn't been put on the wrist, but just go the extra mile and say, you know, it hasn't been sized or it has been sized. It was put on my wrist one time and then let the buyer really make up the mind if they think it's this concept of new or not. I see this a lot, guys. Um, I, you know, before I became a dealer, I wouldn't have thought twice about it, but now I just see how frequently this happens. So I always recommend avoid these kind of uh, catchphrase, catch-all words. Now, next I will say, papers are papers. This is something I see a lot, and it's understandable because brands will put warranty cards, uh, you know, even on the ether, they'll put it out there, the, the warranty will be digital or something like that, or the warranty card will be like a piece of wood for some of these micro brands or something like that, right? The warranty card is papers, and the, the manual or the instructions or any other kind of literature is just not papers. It might be actually physical paper, but in, in kind of that like watch trading terms, papers, are the warranty card. And if it doesn't come with a card, just whatever it is that stands for the warranty with the manufacturer, whether it's filled out or not, papers are the warranty card. So I see this a lot. Unfortunately, someone buys a gray market watch on you know, one of your gray market websites and it, it doesn't have the, you know, the warranty card or the warranty, the, um, it just doesn't have that because a lot of times it doesn't depending where you get it. And then they're a little bit disappointed because they had all the other literature and it's like, well, it doesn't have this one thing. Well, it's really like that one thing that matters in terms of the pricing, right? Like all the other documents on how to use a watch are nice, but it's really like that certificate of authenticity that's tied to the warranty that people are willing to pay more for, including generally watch dealers. So hold on to the papers if you can. If you have a watch, find them. It does really matter. Now, lastly, the last tip I'll throw out there, because I think this does really help uh, everyone, is to check Chrono24, right? Check the marketplaces, go to this website called Watch Recon, for example. It searches all the forums, it kind of aggregates everything and gives you pricing on, on watches, um, and I'm not associated with them in, in any way, but it, it seems to be pretty, pretty accurate kind of check out what these watches are listed at and sort by price, lowest to highest. You know, whether you're selling to a dealer or a private party or anything like that, it's just, you know, it's good to kind of know what the market is, right? Are there a lot of these watches floating around? Is someone gonna be eager to stock this? What is, get a feel for, you know, what does the demand look like? Uh, what does pricing look like? Just kind of get a feel for it, right? Because, you know, let's say a watch is $5,000 lowest price on eBay or Chrono or any of the other places, it's gonna be extremely difficult, you know, to expect, or I mean, it's just not like, it's just not possible to expect to get $5,000, right? Because the marketplace has to take their cut. Uh, you have to imagine someone's gonna wiggle or haggle a little bit, or, you know, you're only seeing the list price, you're not seeing the, the sales price. So you have to kind of figure that in and come up with a number of, you know, what works for you, do you really actually want to sell it? And if so, what's the number based on the numbers that are out there that you know, you're know you willing to accept? And that's kind of how it works. And I often see this happen with private parties all of the time where it's like, well, you know, there's a listing on Chrono24 and it's once again, $5,000. So I want $5,000 and the private party will say, well, I could just go buy it on Chrono24. Why would I pay 5,000 for yours? And you know, this is kind of that dance that I think still happens to some degree, but sometimes, you know, there is a, a, mi like a, a mismatch of expectations that comes, you know, regardless of where you're looking to sell the watch. Even if you put the watch for auction on eBay, you still have to kind of figure out, you know, what am I willing to accept for this or your buy it now price or, uh, you know, down that trail of thought is just figure out what you think you actually could get for it. And it'll go such a long way in that sales process and also kind of help to manage expectations. It's something that I always did as a collector in the past. I do it today as a dealer at Delray Watch, delraywatch.com. And I see some of the most successful kind of collectors and traders also use this methodology as well. But what do you guys think? What are your experiences uh, either trading, buying or selling or collecting? I would love to see it and hear it in the comments below. Please do not forget to check out, once again, delraywatch.com, where we do specialize in enthusiast watches, the Gerard Perigos, the H. Mosers of the world. And of course, you can check out my Instagram, The Real John P. Thanks, guys. You've been chatting with John P.